Welcome to Attican Plays Railway Empire. All right, hi, this is Attican, and welcome to another Railway Empire Quick Guide. This is a three city cluster with a different approach where we use a single warehouse and we kind of uh, combine our pass through warehouse strategy with our uh, city growth cluster strategy. And I got to give all credit to Johnny Hughes for this design. This is my interpretation of how he wrote it up. I think this is what he was telling me. If it, if it is, I'm glad I got it right. If it isn't, this is what you should have told me because this is really good. Um, so uh, all credit to Johnny, great job with this. Uh, basically, he kind of took our pass-through strategy and moved the pass-through warehouse over here and connected it to a central city. And as he described it to me, you get a beer meat line there's our beer, here's our meat, on the long ends of this thing. And the, what you have in the middle is kind of irrelevant. It could be any industry, but you're going to have your beer meat line running from all the way from Brownsville, in this case, up to New Orleans. And what we have now, first of all, this is a three city cluster. So first principle of a three city cluster is all three cities need to be able to move goods back and forth directly between one another. So we have a direct line from Brownsville to Houston, and we have a direct line from Houston to New Orleans. And then the third line we need, of course, would be New Orleans to Brownsville. And one of the reasons I picked a different map is I wanted to show you kind of how you do this when those cities are kind of lined up more or less in a straight line like this. They're just running along the coast here, they're running along the Gulf Coast. So how would we do this? Well, it's super simple. We use the same track for the main part of it, coming out of Brownsville, coming all the way up. And then we just simply put a bypass right here around Houston and then hook it back into our main line over on the other side. And that allows trains to run directly from uh, Brownsville to um, New Orleans, way up on the other end. Let's get one, of, here's one, let's, let's look at their path. So you can see that the train would come out of Brownsville, run up this right-hand side. I've also set waypoints to force the city-to-city -city lines to run on these, these two uh, tracks on this side because I want to keep the uh, warehouse freight uh, lines over here on this side. So we've got all of our city-to-city -city traffic on these two tracks by using these waypoints. And you can see here when it gets up here to Houston, uh, the pro program now, it didn't used to do this, but now it'll automatically, if there's a bypass around a station that you're not going to, you don't really need to use, it will automatically take that bypass and move on. So now we've got this beautiful line that runs around Houston, doesn't tie up their traffic, pulls kind of out of it and goes on its merry way. So we've got our city to city lines going. Okay, those are all good. And the next thing is we've got a warehouse here hooked up to Houston and that warehouse is accepting right now it's accepting wheat coffee wood and sugar because those are the basic first elements that show up on this map this is we're playing the Viva Mexico map the Mexico DLC map but we started up here in Houston up in Houston Texas and so you'll notice there's meat here there's beer here Oh, look at this, Brownsville has grown. That, that tells you the next thing. They're all growing like crazy. And we put in a textile in Houston because it grew to 40,000. And what we're waiting on now is actually somebody to grow big enough to open up this tailor for us so we can put a tailor in one of these cities. We only have the three things we can choose from right now because we've grown so fast. We're just waiting on somebody. We just need... Um, once we get to 60,000, it'll open up some more possibilities for us in terms of um, industry. But if you look at the growth we're getting, uh, oh, and I, I should finish off the whole thought. The whole thought is now the pass-through part is like this. We now have, we know that these goods are getting to Houston, right? Because they're coming into the warehouse and they're automatically Houston is, is consuming them as needed. But in order to get them to Brownsville and to New Orleans, we have a line that runs from Brownsville to the warehouse over to New Orleans. Look at this, New Orleans is growing too. Over to New Orleans and back to the warehouse. 
And that way, just like uh, uh, the pass-through uh, warehouse we, we've, we've seen earlier, um, any goods that are needed in New Orleans would be, that are produced in Brownsville, in other words, in this case, beer, would be loaded up. Then it would go to the warehouse, warehouse, top off with whatever is here that's needed in New Orleans, go to New Orleans, drop everything off, pick up meat in, in New Orleans, go up here to the warehouse, top off with anything needed down in, in Brownsville and run down here and drop off. So we've got this beautiful pass through that's moving all these raw materials um, between and some of the goods between New Orleans and uh, Brownsville, which by the way raises a point. We don't even have to have the um, city to city line. It's actually serving as the city to city line too as it goes through the warehouse. So the city to city line we have set up on the, on the bypass is really an extra which is great that it's a long haul so it gives us more uh, capability to move stuff but uh, uh, I didn't even catch that at first we already have that line by way of this pass through but the way it is set up now with the city to city I've even got it set on automatic so that we can get some passenger and, and mail revenue when we don't have enough freight to move so a lot of the stuff and the other good thing the other thing I definitely recommend doing this anyway if you use the strategy is that that way, we're not loading up so much uh, on the uh, pass-through line. We're not loading up so much with the meat and beer, and that leaves more room to pick up these goods when they're in the warehouse. Now, this thing is growing, as you can see, like wildfire. We're, we're in our, just started our second year. Uh, so we've been at this about 13 months. And, uh, of course, this is much faster than you could do it. I'm doing this in sandbox, so, of course, I'm... I could build much faster than you normally would, but it would not be that hard to build into this, to build into a situation like this with a three city cluster and a nice little warehouse. One warehouse, it really, really saves you a lot. So uh, what we wanna do is the same principle we would have with any of our clusters. We want to manage what uh, um, industries go in here. And we've got Brownsville is about to hit, is growing at an 83% rate and it's about to hit 60 which is going to open up as i said some opportunities we've got the chance to put something else in here oh wait uh here we go good the tailor has popped up let's go ahead and put the tailor in uh um new orleans and it really doesn't matter where we put them and really the good news is if we take the tailor and put it in a separate location from the cloth the cloth now we'll get revenue, uh, freight revenue for shipping this cloth over here to this um, tailor, as well as, of course, the revenue for shipping the, the uh, clothing back out to the other two cities. So in some ways, it's really, I mean, it's much more efficient if you had, had it literally in Houston with the uh, weaver, but you actually make more revenue on freight if we move it over to another city. And the beauty of these three city clusters, it doesn't matter which city has which industries as long as we have three good industries we can supply. So now that we've got some, well, we're, do we have any more opportunities? We've got all of those. The next one we want to see is a sawmill. Maybe we'll throw that in Brownsville. It depends on Brownsville or Houston, whichever one pops up. And uh, we've got this redundant meat industry. Now you know we're going to do something with that. So what we would want to do, of course, it's really not getting any supplies. So if you had to buy this in a, in a competitive scenario, it would be relatively cheap. We're gonna throw it, knock that thing down as soon as we have something else we can build. So let's let this run a little bit and then we'll come back to it and put in a couple more industries and you can see how it works. But as you can see, we're getting growth, growth, growth. Everybody's growing. Okay, so now we've hit that 60,000 and opened up the sawmill as a possibility. Let's go ahead and put the sawmill in uh, Houston. And we still need something for, and you'll notice, I think they put, what did they put down here? A private owner put a sawmill down here in um, Brownsville, which makes sense because it's really the only other, it's the only thing left to put, to put in right now. So we need to just grow some more to open up some more possibilities. But we know this one in Houston is going to do great because it's getting tons of wood. 
And this would be a good time to talk about the trade-offs. What's the difference between this and the other three city cluster I, I uh, showed you? Well, first of all, they're identical in the, in the theory in terms of the three city cluster and how the three cities uh, have this symbiotic relationship and ship goods to one another and help one another grow. The big difference is, of course, we have one warehouse rather than three. So this is much cheaper to set up, much easier, but there do, it is, does come with a limit. What's going to happen here is Houston grows, and you can look at this growth rate, 92%. It's just going to going to just grab practically everything. So this it's going to be extremely difficult to keep stuff in this warehouse. There's there's some stuff in there. It's not doing too badly, but you see it just dropping down. Uh, we are shipping stuff back and forth, but Houston's going to continue to grow and continue to to really grab, but it's going to get great growth rate. I mean, it's going to be way up there, fast growth rate. So use this strategy when you want to do a fast growth of a single city and you get two other cities to grow besides it. And also, it's cheaper to set up and, and simpler to run. Uh, you don't have to have that uh, kind of complicated uh, way of doing your uh, goods between warehouses. It's not that complicated, but it's, uh, it is a little bit. And so this one is a great strategy to use. I would highly recommend it when you do scenarios because it can be set up quickly and it does great city growth for three cities and really gets one going really well. And here's another thing you can do that uh, John Johnny pointed out he likes to do. Once you get this warehouse kind of going, you can also go out here and turn this into a four city cluster pretty easily. So I'm going to go out here and let's say we wanted to build up old San Antonio. Now what we can do is run a line from San Antonio Kind of like so, we can run a line from San Antonio into the warehouse and just bring warehouse goods out to San Antonio. In fact, I'll go ahead and set this up and come back and, and show you what I mean. All right, so I just simply ran lines that hooked into uh, the system to go to the warehouse. Another line that hooks in, I'll show you why, down, that goes down toward Brownsville. So let, we're going to set up a line from the warehouse to San Antonio. And because I'm using the super station, I can't designate a line, but that's okay. I'm just going to run, let's run three trains, and they're just going to load up whatever they can find in that warehouse that can be used in San Antonio and just shuttle it over there and go back and get more. And then the other thing we're going to do is kind of treat this, and again, this is kind of a hybrid. We're going to treat this like, um, a, it's sort of a four city cluster, but it's really a three city cluster. And now we're building a two city cluster on top of it, a meat and beer line right here. That's why I chose San Antonio and did it down here where we have the beer. Um, we're going to run a beer and meat line between San Antonio and Brownsville. And you can see for right now, it's just a passenger line. But what we'll want to do, because we have meat over here, and we are, again, we're going to treat this like a two-city cluster. Remember, this one's already getting its supplies from the warehouse. Now, this one's going to get its raw materials from the warehouse. And we're going to follow our principle and make sure that we run cattle over to San Antonio to make sure that it has meat and can... And it'll do several things for us. One is it'll it'll take pressure off the rest of our lines by making sure there's plenty of meat in Brownsville. And again, freeing up the Brownsville line to haul in other goods. So good deal all around. So we'll just set up a line that runs um, the cattle into runs the cattle into uh, San Antonio and now we just have almost like an instant uh, two city cluster that we can that we can grow uh, San Antonio. Now our growth in San Antonio is almost like a happy uh, 
uh, what would you call it? it it's a happy, happy uh, side product of this. It wasn't our target, but here's the ability for us to grow a fourth city off of this. And we could, I mean, in theory, uh, you could think about even pulling more off of that warehouse, but I would not recommend it, and nor does Johnny. Uh, he's tried this in multiple times, and he doesn't recommend going past four cities. So look at this growth we're getting in Houston, 82%. Let's check out uh, New Orleans. New Orleans is growing at 69%. And we've got a profitable tailor there. And how about down here in Brownsville? Brownsville is growing at 69% and, and about to hit its point where it can get a museum. Then we've got our new, new addition, San Antonio, is already growing. It's already getting good growth for us. The meat industry is getting... Um, the goods it needs it's starting to pick up the other stuff as these as this line starts to feed it here comes some wood here comes wood just the things it needs wood and some grain and some uh, coffee so beautiful so just wanted to show you that as an alternative three city cluster beautiful design hats off to Johnny and I just want to uh, reiterate that one of the great things about uh, this channel the things that I love about it and others have mentioned this as well, is that we all learn from each other. And every time you guys post comments, I get a little better as a player, and hopefully I'm able to pass most of that on to the rest of you so that we all improve. So, uh, again, thank you, Johnny, for a great contribution. And you guys uh, use this in good health and build some great uh, three-slash-four city clusters or a three-city cluster and a two-city cluster. That's what it really is. So enjoy. I hope you enjoyed this. I hope it'll help you become a better player, and I hope you'll join us for our next Railway Empire video. Thank you.